Hello educators, this is Troy, your instructional designer. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at Blackboard Ultra's current details and actions in your course, coming up. Currently in June, 2022, Blackboard Ultra has particular actions and details within each Ultra course. You're going to find these details and actions on your course homepage. Once you go into your course, you will find all of these links. I like to re reference these as the blue links uh, in your course. You're going to see details and actions. And in this video, all I'm going to do is walk through each one and the different settings and the variety of features that are located in these details and actions. The first one is going to be your roster. Now, when you click on your roster, you're going to see a detailed list of all of your students, and each one of them have their own little profile card. And under this profile card, you can see their name, their status in your course, which is student. Here I have two. Uh, the first one is the, the preview user uh, that Blackboard Ultra gives you when you go into student preview mode. The next one is I have a testing student. That way we can log in and see what it actually looks like in the eyes of a student. Uh, and these two accounts can be managed by the three ellipses in their little card. You can see in, the way they have accommodations. Now I have a full video of student accommodations and how to set them. So definitely check that out when you get done with this video. You can also edit member information. Now edit information, simply you're going to say, are they going to be able to access this course or not? Currently, I have the where you can change the role. You can change uh, and remove the member. That's because I'm at Blackboard Administrator in our site. So chances are, uh, as an instructor, you won't have the ability to remove them from your class. You can just simply block their access to the course. The other thing you can do are those accommodations. And again, I have a full video on how to do that. So you can set accommodations based on due date, based on time limit. And I know that there's uh, Blackboard updates to come that will allow you to get into more details within the accommodations. The next setting and feature that we want to look at are course groups. Uh, you can go to create and manage groups. Now understand that you have within a course a group set. This could be a particular group. Maybe it's a section that you're teaching. You have multiple sections within one shell in your environment. I know that I've taught... Uh, on Canvas uh, using several groups. I had one shell, but I was actually teaching three sections in that set shell, whether it was uh, AM class, I had a, a night class, I had a hybrid class, and a fully online class that they actually participated in that one shell. So you can set a group, and the student group are custom depending on uh, you know, how you want to organize. This is just a way to manage or organize your students. So if you have a capstone course and, and students are on teams or they're working together on a project, you can come in here and create a group set and then create groups within that set for that particular uh, project. Uh, now, keep in mind the student groups, you can also sort them in the grade book so you can only look at particular groups as well as you can assign particular uh, assignments or, do, or gradable items for those groups themselves. Uh, for a full detail on groups or course groups, you can go to help.blackboard.com. Uh, they have a lot of information there for group sets. And I know that I'll have videos in the future kind of going through the nitty gritty or the details specifically to setting up groups and assigning assignments to them. The next feature that you'll see in my details and actions are the progress tracking settings. I do have them currently turned on. This is just an option that we have in Blackboard Ultra that can track or help your students track their progress as they go through your course. Uh, I have it on right now and I'd like to go into my student preview mode to show you what it actually looks like and, and, and see what are the progress tracking abilities. Uh, so as it goes into the student preview, you can see that along the items that they can see, I have this Evolve 3 link. I also have this Module 1, and it has a dot here. And as somebody completes this, uh, opening up that module and going to the example discussion that I have, 
this is a gradable item, so they're going to go and participate in this item. But if they just simply go back and not participate in it, you can see that this, that this circle is actually half full. Uh, students are able to track their progress as they go through this course uh, based on have they viewed it or they've completed it. So if they say they completed it, the actual course itself will mark this green and they can allow them to move on. Uh, these actually uh, progress trackers, they're actually set and they're um, kind of in line with your sequencing. So if you have a module that has a sequence where they have to start, you know, on the first item and move a uh, sequence, they can actually do that uh, and, and track their progress in this manner. The next detail and action item is our course image. Now, the course image appears up at the top as a banner if I want to. It also appears in the card view in the courses, toggling this icon right here on the left. We'll go from the list view to the card view. Now, you're also going to see these images or these, these card views if you use the mobile app, whether you're an instructor or a student logging into that mobile app you're going to see this image. So going back to that setting, we can go into the display settings. It pops up a menu on the right-hand side, and it can allow uh, the ability to use this as the course image. I can select this. It says it no longer is going to be your banner, but it still will be your card thumbnail image. Do you want to do this, yes or no? And I can hit continue. I'm just going to show you this real quick to show you that it'll actually remove it from the top if we hit save. Going back into that course image, I can then say, well, I do want this to be my banner and toggle that uh, little selection bar. Uh, for the first time, you're going to have some kind of landscaping picture. This is what Blackboard Ultra gives you. It's just a random picture that's populated. If you want to upload a new image, you can click upload. You can go out to your pictures, your, uh, you know, your computer and find your banner. So I'll go quickly to just and find a banner image. Say I want these, this texture here, this these squares. I can hit open. It's now going to do its thing and upload. It allows me to move this image within the viewable field. Now keep in mind this image here is adaptable, which means that it will resize when you're in the app, whether you're looking at it in a widescreen, uh, you know, or a, a square monitor. Uh, you can zoom in to see what we want to actually see in the center of this image here. And I can hit Done. Now it's going to select what I wanted to view. I can mark this as a decorative item. So this is specific to accessibility, uh, you know, whether this image has a description or not. So I can mark it as uh, decorative. I can unselect this and put a description if I want to. I'm going to use it as decorative and hit save. Now you will see that that image uh, comes up here as the banner and it comes in as the card view itself. The next item in the details and actions is the course open or close. Uh, this is an option where you can actually lock or make your course private. Uh, most universities will set their course to be available to the student before the course actually begins. Uh, so that way the student can get in there. Maybe they need to download a book or get access to their resources online somehow. Uh, but the, the instructor themselves actually has the ability to close this. So by selecting this, I can say, uh, do I want to make the course private? Do I want to complete the course, which changes the status of it was a current course and now it's a completed course, or I can hit cancel. In doing these, you can either lock out the student from actually participating in it, or if you were completing that course, uh, they can still access the course. They're not actually able to, um, you know, complete any assignments for that uh, particular window of time. The next feature that we have available on our site is Blackboard Collaborate. Now, Blackboard Collaborate is their video conferencing tool. Uh, we have it where it's embedded into our site itself. And that just allows the course shell to have its own web conferencing room that students can meet with their instructor, they can meet with their other you know, fellow students. Uh, I will have videos in the future outlining the specific details because it is a big feature of the website itself. 
Uh, and I know that they are subject to change. There's a lot of settings in this, and they are constantly updating this uh, as we move forward with Blackboard Ultra. But just know that the students can actually join the session, and that is going to allow them to go to a course room. You can see I have actually have other rooms here that I can use as a personal collaborate room if I want to, or I can do a particular session, uh, whether that's maybe a guest speaker for this particular course, uh, or I want to have a particular window of time where students could go in and use it, say it's office hours online, then I can actually make a meeting room specifically for that. Note that all of the settings for the collaborate rooms are under this ellipsis right here. You can go down and get a guest uh, course room link. You can manage or edit that course room settings, whether uh, when people come in, they have their microphone turned on or their camera turned on or off. And you can manage all sessions here. I'll just simply go to this page to show you that I do have multiple sessions. They are consistent of the course room itself. So that's that main room. And then I have the other two sessions that you saw under my drop down menu a training module uh, section that's available, and then also a meeting room that I have. The next feature that we have under the details and actions are the attendance. Now, a lot of faculty, maybe they don't use attendance uh, for their particular course online. Maybe they use it as a submission of some kind. Uh, this is a good tool to use if you're using a shell, uh, you know, a Blackboard course for your on-campus students. So I can go in and hit Mark Attendance, what this does is actually creates a gradable item that is viewable in your gradebook. Uh, we can hit Add Attendance. Now, it does have my student uh, roster here, my student role. I can set percentages of what the grade is, uh, you know, based on the points, based on a letter grade, present, late, absent, excused. I can include or exclude excused absences inside the calculation. I can say that this attendance is graded. So if I just want to take attendance as a record and not actually make it a gradable item, I can deselect this. And it tells me that it's going to be removed from my grade book and I can hit continue. If it is going to be graded, I can say grade based on points, percentage, or letter. Uh, right now I have points. And so I can go in and give them points for this particular item, or I can remove attendance altogether. Now, once on this attendance, it is showing that it is today. Anytime that you go into this attendance setting, it's going to show that it's that current day. If you want to move back into uh, previous attendances, you actually have this arrow over here on the top left. They say previous meeting. You can go in and give the student points based on what they are. You can grade based on clicking if they were present or if they were late. Uh, what percentage did they give that depending on the grading schema that you saw in that last menu, uh, you can mark them late. Maybe you made a mistake and said, oh, no, they're actually here. You can always change their attendance for that particular day. Maybe they were out and it was excused. Uh, so that's just a basic run through. Again, if you want more information on the attendance setting in Blackboard Ultra, go to help.blackboard.com. The next item we have in the details and actions are the announcements. These announcements come in as pop-up windows or pop-up messages when students access the course for either the first time uh, or after, the, it's actually the first time after you've made an announcement. Uh, you can see I have three posted and three total. I'm gonna go into this, I can, you can see that I have three, uh, none of them are scheduled, none of them are drafts. I have testing uh, announcements here if I want to go and quickly make a new one, I can hit this plus sign up here at the top right. Make a new announcement. I can title it, uh, you know, we can say YouTube demo for this particular video. I can then go in and hit recipients. This is a way that you can actually message this out to all of the students. If I had a student group, you can actually message only the particular uh, student group itself. It has a full text editor box where I can actually put videos or images, uh, links going out to another site if I want to, all in this message box. I can actually tell them to say, send the student an email copy of this actual announcement itself. Or if I want to, I can schedule the announcement to be released at another date. What I like to do is actually send an email as a copy 
What this does is it doesn't allow you to schedule this announcement. And I will put uh, some jargon in here. Uh, so then I can go ahead and hit save. And you can see that it actually saves it as a draft. Now I know that the title is YouTube demo and I have a draft here and it gives me a little bit of the content that I typed in there, but it has not posted yet. So now you have the ability to go in and say, you know what, I wanna make my announcement on Monday. I wanna be able to send it to them via their email and the pop-up window, but I don't wanna post it until Wednesday and the scheduler is kind of de you know, deactivated. So I can actually post on Wednesday. I'll just have to go manually do that if I want to. And then any other management you can find under the ellipsis, you can edit, delete, you can copy one if you make the same announcement over the course of the semester or not. Um, you can manage those announcements there. The second to the last setting that we see here are the books and tools. This link appears not only to the students, but actually to anyone in the course itself. These are the institution tools um, or your course tools. You can see that I have a variety whether it's McGraw-Hill Connect, Cengage, MindTap, or Cengage uh, tools. Yeah, I have a SimNet tool. I have a Macmillan uh, tool here. These are all tools that I've used in the past. This is a sandbox that I use quite often to just demo some things. Just know that this menu will have the textbook, whether it's connected to a Connect or a Cengage or any other partner tool that you have built into your site. Uh, so definitely check those tools out. If you want to see the full list of tools, Go down to Browse All Course Tools, and you will see a variety of things uh, here, whether they're Pearson or MyLabs, Macmillan. We have Adobe, uh, Jones Bartlett Learning. So we have quite a few. These are all configured through our LMS administrator, through our website itself. So if you're not seeing a particular item on this page that you are seeing in your Blackboard Ultra uh, instant, definitely reach out to your Blackboard administrator. They can get that configured for you. Uh, you can reach out to your rep, whether it's a publisher tool that you want to have on the platform, and, and just see if they have it available. Uh, Blackboard Ultra does have most recent and most accurate uh, list of LTIs or partner cloud tools that they have available. So definitely check out help.blackboard.com. The last feature in our details and actions is the question bank. I do have a full list of details or a video specifically outlining question banks and test pools uh, in those assignments. So definitely check that video out when you're done. Uh, I'm gonna hit manage banks. You can see that this is just a basic, to, uh, basic window that you can add files or add question banks up here on the top right. It will upload and it will give you the option to kind of manage your banks here. It has a delete button. In the future, I'd like to see Blackboard Ultra put a download button. Say I've uploaded a test bank some time ago and I've lost that file. I wanna be able to download this test bank here and kind of manage those. The other thing I'd like to see uh, here on this page is, you know, this is a question bank. I should be able to go into this file and start editing questions if I want to. Uh, once I, I edit and save those, I should be able to go in here and see my changes. Currently, uh, we don't have this in June uh, 2022, but I definitely like to see Blackboard move in that direction where you can actually start managing your question banks on this window. I hope this video was helpful. If you need any additional help with your Blackboard course, feel free to reach out, or you can go to help.blackboard.com. Thanks for watching.